Hi, today we're going to be talking about the anatomy of the chicken. And this is presented by Amaya Grainez and Linda Johnson. Hello, and welcome to the external anatomy of the chicken. Beginning at the earlobe, we can see specialized skin located below the opening of the ear. This is the opening into the ear canal, which is protected by feathers. The color of the earlobe is also correlated with the color of eggs laid by the chicken. Next are the combs and wattles of the chicken, which vary in different breeds. The size and shape of these structures are dependent on sex hormones and are thought to have a purely ornamental purpose. Now, let's move on to the feathers, which is a characteristic shared by all avian species. These structures were derived from reptilian scales in evolution. They are made from keratin and are formed through tracts called pterilae. The purpose of these structures is to not only shield the skin from damage and extreme temperatures, but also for flight. There are three types of feathers, contour, penne, which sheath the body, wings, and tail, down, plumules, and florpern, which have sensory receptors next to their base. The feathers of chicken also begin to molt when hens do not produce eggs, which is a trait that has been controlled through selective breeding of chicken. The brachial vein is located underneath the wing, situated in between the biceps brachii and the triceps brachii. Its primary purpose is for blood collection. In the oral cavity of chicken, there are no teeth present. The tongue is triangular with small taste buds known as lingual papillae. Also within the tongue muscle is the intoglossal process of the hyoid apparatus. The uropygeal gland is a bilobe sebaceous gland, dorsally located at the base of the tail. It secretes oil for feathers, which is spread over the body through the process of preening. Moving on to the respiratory system. So the function uh, is for oxygen intake and carbon dioxide waste and for cooling. The lungs and air sacs allow a continuous stream of air to pass through the tissues in one direction. A pair of air sacs is found in the abdominal cavity and lying dorsal laterally to the intestines. Additionally, two pairs of air sacs can be found in the cranial and caudal thorax. Both penetrate into the septum. The avian respiratory system is extremely efficient. There are no diaphragm and the intercostal muscles are the major muscles for respiration, while expiration is the result of contracting abdominal muscles. There are no sweat glands in birds, so the respiratory system is also used for cooling. Here we have the trachea. And here we have the glottis, which is the opening of the trachea. And then we have the syrinx, and this is where sound is produced in birds. Okay, moving on to the muscular system. Here we have M superficial pectoral or pectoralis major. This is the largest muscle of the bird and contributes most of the force necessary for the downward movement of the wing. We then have the supracorticodius or the pectoralis minor, and this is responsible for the elevation of the wing and lap stroke. Here we have M biceps brachii. This is the flexor of the wing running ventral to the humerus. Here we have M triceps brachii. This flexes the shoulder and extends the forearm. And here we have the M iliotibialis or the gluteus maximus. This flexes the hip and extends the knee and lower leg. We have the M sartorius. This flexes the hip and extends the knee. We have the M semitendinosus. This extends the thigh. We have M tibialis anterior. This flexes the tarso metatarsus forward. We have M semimembranosus. This extends the thigh and flexes the knee. We have M abductor longus. This abducts and extends the thigh. We have M ambiens. We have M quadriceps femoris. Extends the thigh. We have M gastrocnemius. And this flexes the knee and extends the foot. Moving on, we have the digestive system. And here we have the beak that crushes, tears, or holds food. 
We have the tongue, and it's a narrow and often triangular with few taste buds, but numerous touch receptors. And here's the esophagus. It's a muscular tube remaining perpendicular and mostly dorsal to the trachea. Here's the crop, and it's a temporary storage of food. And here we have the proventriculus. It's a glandular stomach that secretes HCL, peptic enzymes, and mucus for digestion. And here is the gizzard, or the ventriculus. It's a thick muscular wall with sandpaper-like inner surface. It has strong contractions to grind food. It contains small stones and grit to help smash food. And here we have the duodenal loop, or the duodenum. So the small intestine is composed of the duodenum, ileum, and digenum. The mesentery fixes the small intestinal to the dorsal abdominal wall and supports the superior and inferior mesenteric arteries and veins within the tissue. And this is where absorptions of nutrients happen. And here we have the pancreas. It's located in the duodenal loop. Uh, bile ducts enter the duodenum near the pancreas. Here we have the large intestine. This is where the last water reabsorption occurs. Here we have the cloaca. Fecal material from the intestines is collected and ejected from the body through the vent. And here we have the cica. This contains bacteria important in digestion of plant cellulose. Uh, we really couldn't get the liver and the gallbladder, so here's a diagram. So the liver is large four-lobed gland in the abdomen, and the gallbladder stores bile that is produced in the liver, and this also discharges bile into the duodenum to aid digestion and absorption of lipid. Now, we will be examining the reproductive system more closely. Just to preface, however, the specimen for our dissection was female, so most of the visuals will be centered around the parts specific to the female reproductive system. The ovary is situated under the left kidney, which places both structures on the left side of the abdominal cavity. As a general rule of thumb, chickens only retain the left ovary and oviduct. The purpose of this structure is to contain eggs of various sizes for eventual reproduction. The post-ovulatory follicles are a follicular structure that follows the ovulation of the oocyte. The infundibulum is a portion of the oviduct that catches the oocyte after ovulation and directs it to the magnum. This structure is also one of two sites within the reproductive tract utilized for sperm storage. Next is the ithmus, which is located caudally to the magnum. This thin-walled structure is where egg membrane is secreted, and an oocyte can remain for one to two hours. The magnum is the thick-walled part of the oviduct. Within it are glands that produce and secrete albumin, whose function is to prevent leaks of fluids and carry enzymes, hormones, or vitamins to parts of the body. As the oocyte travels, it can stay in this location for two hours. The shell gland, also known as the uterus, is the site of shell formation and pigmentation within a chicken. This is a process that may take up to 20 hours. The shell gland also opens into the cloaca on the left side. The vagina of a chicken lies between the shell gland and the cloaca, or oviduct. Sperm are stored in tubule glands between the vagina and the shell gland. Now, we'll quickly move on to the topic of the male reproductive organs. The testes, which are located anterior to the kidney, are about equal size. Like other species, the function of this structure is to store sperm and allow for its transport through the vas deferens. Moving on to the urogenital system, we will begin examining the kidneys. This is a three-lobed structure in chickens that is located within the dorsal cavity of the abdomen, beneath the syncecrum. This structure is known for being the site of urine production through a process known as glomerular filtration. Next are the ureters, located between the cranial and medial lobe 
running to the aorta and ending at the cloaca. In females, the structure opens into the cloaca dorsal to the oviduct. Conversely, in males, the ureters open medial to the ductus deferens on the papilla. Lastly, we have a circulatory system. So avian species have a four-chambered heart that is enclosed in a pericardial sac. And that's a wrap for this chicken dissection movie. Thanks for watching.